Today on the Charge Up, women's lacrosse kept up their successful start to the season, while softball was able to sweep their doubleheader over the weekend, and baseball continued their undefeated win streak to start the season. That's all coming up on the Charge Up. Welcome to The Charge Up. I'm James Cassidy and with me today is Christy Geronimo, Devin Maida, and Eric Nybro. So how was your guys' break this last couple of weeks? Uh, did pretty much nothing. I had a couple of interviews. Nice, so nice. Somewhat productive. Yeah, I felt like I was on the beach watching all the Instagram stuff going up and down, <laughs> oh, but yeah. I was not at the beach. You know what? My couch was really nice. So that was a good thing. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> nice. Sounds like you all had an exciting break over this. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Very exciting. <laughs> Very exciting. Women's lacrosse beat Franklin Pierce Saturday 21-19 at home, increasing their record to 3-1 on the season. Chris, what do we see from the women in this game? Uh, what we saw from them was they got to a little slow start. They got down a little bit. They're down five goals in the first half. Then they got together with the versatile offense, and they came back, and they won the game. What we see from this season is a little bit of a little mambo number five going on in this offense. We got a little bit of Mackenzie Ray, a little bit of Sam Gallup, some Julia Jett, some Caroline Mahar. A lot of people are contributing, and it's great. Um, it's nice to see the versatility on offense because it's not just that one person that another team can single in on and shut them down, and then the whole team just freaks out and collapses, and then they, they don't do any scoring. But it's nice to have the Mambo number five, <laughs> five, five girls spreading around, dishing it off, and uh, lighting it up on offense, which should help the defense. But Eric. I know you, you are a little critical of the defense. Yeah, the defense is lacking right now. They give up 19 goals to Franklin Pierce, and they got to step it up if they want to win this game this Tuesday against Adelphi, who is very strong competition. Yeah, the goals have been actually pretty good lately. They're in the top 20 in save percentage, but they're also in the top five in goals against. So what that means is they're getting a lot of shots on goal against them, letting, letting a few win, but it, it's great to see them... Uh, have a great save percentage, but it's not good with the shots. Yeah, I mean, when you're giving up, when you're, the defense is letting that many shots on goal, there's only so much the goalies can do. I mean, they need a little bit of help. Because if they're saving that much, which is nice, that's a good sign. So if, the, if you tighten up that defense, we're going to have a pretty solid uh, overall team. And I think, I think they could do that. they got plenty of time left in the season to do it. Yeah, yeah, as Eric mentioned, they were playing Adelphi on this Tuesday. What are some keys you guys think that they need to really hit if they want to have a shot against Adelphi coming up? Well, they have to keep the ball away from Adelphi because they have a great offense also. So if you're able to keep them away from the ball with draw controls and uh, ground balls, you're going to have to, you're going to stop them and we're going to be great on offense. Defense wins championships. It also wins games. This Adelphi team is very strong. They're probably our best competition going into the season. And uh, they got to play well on defense. Yeah, it's all a, about they that. they got a lot of firepower, so you got to clean it up on defense. And we know their offense is capable of competing with anyone. So just clean it up on defense, and the W's will come. Yeah, one thing I think is that they're coming to our house. So we can't be afraid of that Adelphi across their chest. We have to show up. We have to do what we have to do. And I think both projection right here, woo, 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 we're going to beat them <laughs> some, uh, Tuesday. I, I really believe that. Nice. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> The Chargers will play Adelphi on Tuesday at Kathy's Olad Stadium starting at 7 p.m. Chargers softball picked up two wins in their doubleheader over the weekend against LIU Post with top performances coming from their pitching staff. Eric, did the pitching decide these games? Yeah, they were great against LIU Post, Megan Butts and Kylie Stonebreaker. Megan Butts only won, uh, zero earned runs while Kylie Stonebreaker only gave up one. Kylie Stonebreaker, six Ks, maybe she's turning around after a little bit of a rough uh, t t trip to Tennessee. That didn't go too well for the Chargers. No, yeah, the trip to Tennessee, you know, I think sometimes you gotta take a pounding to get a pounding. The coach did a great job matching them up against these great teams that are in mid-season form. So once they come back to the Northeast, they're going to be ready mentally, mm -hmm. they're going to prepare, and when you prepare for those great teams, you're going to have great success against these weaker any 10 teams. Yeah, I mean, it's a good test for them in Tennessee. I mean, maybe they got a little too lost in the warm weather down there, yeah. so they got to come back to the cold and really tighten up and yeah. uh, 
get that New Haven grit. Yeah, the cold, I think, woke them up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, <laughs> not like Manila. Uh, those teams are pretty good down there in Tennessee. Carson yeah. Newman's a ranked team, and those teams are in midseason form. They're already playing 20 plus games, while we're barely at 10, not even. Yeah, we're just so. warming up, so yeah. they'll be fine. I got plenty, plenty of road ahead. Are there any players aside from Butts or Stonebreaker that you guys feel could really be a difference as this Chargers softball team goes into any 10 play? Well, I think Hillman is a big factor. She has four home runs, which is third in any 10. So if she keep up that power, I think the offense would be great. I think Sierra Whitlock at the top of the lineup. Yeah. She's got to get on base in order to have guys like Hillman and uh, Tack up there at the uh, in the middle of the lineup being able to drive her home. Yeah, get that leadoff hitter on immediately, and then it makes the defense think, all right, we got to worry about this the runner, and then that's when errors come, and errors mean run scored. It doesn't matter how you score as long as you score in runs and winning games. Yeah, Will Echo has nine stolen bases, which is also third in the any 10. So you gotta yeah. keep that up. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. She immediately yeah. gets on, on scoring position. So all you need is a single or a walk or an error to get on base, and she's already on second. There you go. So hopefully the Chargers are gonna get into gear going into the any 10. Softball will play Pace on the road Wednesday, but we'll be back home on Saturday to play Stonehill at noon. Chargers baseball continues to dominate the Northeast region with a doubleheader win against Goldie Beacom, increasing their win total on the season to 14. Devin, what is this team doing right right now? Uh, I mean, I don't even know where to start. I mean, everything's going right. So I guess the easiest thing I'll start is with the athlete of the week, David Palmer, who went, who has a 0.00 ERA. He's given up no earned runs. It's unprecedented. You gotta love this guy. 28 innings, no runs. Uh, or no earned runs, like I said, eight total hits, 28 innings. That's ridiculous. 4-0, and oh, and he's got 24 Ks. This guy is unstoppable, and so is the Chargers. They're eight of their last 15 games, they've dropped at least 10-plus runs. So that's, they don't even need that great of pitching <laughs> with this, yeah. uh, this lights-out performance from um, the offense. In, tw in uh, 14 games, they've only given up 24 runs. But the little thing that they have is they like to give up runs early. In the first two innings, they give up 13 runs. But in the last seven, they've only given up 11. Shows how good that bullpen's been. Yeah, it's nice to see that they can get out of that hole early and they, they don't panic. Never mm -hmm. panic and they settle down and they, you, there's no time in baseball. It's the beauty of baseball. They got until they run out of, run out of outs. Yeah, it's a great overall team effort going on right here. You don't get to 14 wins in a row without everybody clicking no. on every cylinder. And you've seen it on Twitter. You see them keep posting about get a dog, which is pretty much their MVP yeah. of the game. It's yeah. always somebody different. Oh, uh, you know, you got to feed the dogs. And when you feed the dogs, you get a dog. So. It's yeah. been someone different pretty much all 14 games. And that's what you're going to see from an undefeated team is somebody different each game. So. And as Devin mentioned before. earlier, with this kind of scoring, it, they're, coming from, they're getting these runs in multiple different ways. You have the power hitters like Joe Keiko, who's been insane to start the season, leading the Eddie 10 in batting average. And then you have, but you also have some guys that get on base and kill other teams with their speed, like Chamberlain and Wallraven off the top of the order. What do you guys think that this mixture of an offense really does to other teams when they're going up against the Chargers? I mean, when you're when you're able to mix power ball and small ball together, you you can't lose on top of great pitching. I mean, the catalyst is great pitching, but if you're able to mix that speed with some power, then teams don't know what to do. They don't know how to pitch against you. They don't know how to feel against you. They don't know how to play, period. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a mismatch for every team. But one thing I would watch out for is like that mid-season slump that you, you see everywhere in baseball. Yeah. You see in the majors, you see it in college, you see it in high school. So, uh, teams hit that, like, that wall in the middle of the season where like, nothing's going right for them. But I think that this team has enough talent and enough pieces around them that if someone does go through a slump, they that have that. Hump the extra oomph on the offense to help that person out. Yeah, especially in the pitching staff of this team. Like, we talked about David Palmer, but along with him, Tim Kennedy, who's also already 4-0 and on the season. And then even behind him, there's Isaiah Mastry, who's already picked up a couple of wins on the season, and Devin Damasco, who's picked up a couple of wins. So this team can honestly throw out a different starter for multiple games in a week and still have a great chance of coming away yeah, with the W. a plethora of arms to, to toss at you. Yeah, Tim Kennedy, he struggled on Sunday in the first inning. He, he was throwing fastballs all the time, and the, uh, the lineup really got to him and he gave him four runs. But then uh, second and third way through the lineup, he started throwing his curveball, and he really got in the zone, and he was striking everybody out. And 
he was able to rebound from nice a, a, a bad start. To mix up his pitches and, and confuse the hitters instead of just throwing a steady diet of fastballs, because we know that's not that's, that's not the way to go. That's why he gave yeah. up four runs uh -huh. early on because. To play at any higher level of baseball, you have to be able to hit a fastball. So if you're just throwing fastballs, these good hitters will figure out soon enough. Yeah. Kennedy finished with 10, game, 10 Ks in that game and yeah. six innings pitched. That's pretty impressive. I don't think I, they could run into a wall, but they, got, they don't leave New Haven until April. They don't have to leave the whole New Haven area. Yeah. They're going to get to play at home. They're going to be comfortable here. They should be great. Yeah, they're ready for the long haul. Yeah, it's a great arsenal. All right. Let's hope that they keep this streak going. With a 14-0 record, the Chargers are the only undefeated team left in all of Division II baseball. The last time the Chargers started this well was in 1995 when they went 18-0. Tuesday, the Chargers will look to continue this win streak against Dominican. That's all for the Charge Up. Make sure to follow us on social media and tune into Charger Bulletin News on Fridays. Be sure to also watch our March Mar Madness coverage on ChargerBulletin.com. For Devin Maida, Chris C. Geronimo, and Eric Nybro, I'm James Cassidy, and we'll see you next week on The Charge.